In round two of the IHSA football playoffs, the games usually shift to Saturday. This week in the WMBD and Clutch Sports Media Game of the Week, it's two teams with their sights set three Saturdays from now with the IHSA 6A title matchup. It's the 9-1 Washington Panthers taking on the 7-3 Crete Mooney Warriors. Happy Saturday, everybody, with Jonathan Michael, Larry Larson with you. Glad you're with us. And, John, these two teams aren't rivals, per se. They're not conference opponents. They don't see each other a ton. But this is about as close as you can get to a rivalry. Yeah, it certainly is. There's a playoff history between these teams. Crete Moni won 53-24 to back in 2021, knocked out the Panthers. They had a special season that year as well. This season, even more special for the Panthers. They want revenge on the Warriors, who come from the same conference as Kankakee. So these two teams have a little bit of mutual uh, respect and you know, mutual knowledge about each other as well. They definitely have, and Crete Moni also eliminated Washington back in 2018. CM's offense... It really is the lifeblood of their team. And each of their wins this year, they've scored 42 points or more. Yeah, I do. Crete Mooney's always been known as a team that really can put up the points. This year, it's a little bit different than how they usually do it. In the past, they've had speed on the perimeter. Now, this is a very ground-heavy team. They're going to bring a lot of heavy sets. Keep an eye on Terrence Sandage. They're starting running back. Ran for over 200 yards and four touchdowns last week. On the other side of the ball... Washington's defense, year in, year out. If you've been watching Clutch Sports Media, you know the deal about Washington's defense. This year, they're allowing under 10 points per game, and it's led by a defensive line that Daryl Crouch thinks is the best south of I-80, starring Garrett Cox. Yeah, Garrett Cox and Carter Prina, two defensive ends to keep an eye on. They started last year for Washington, have really grown this year. You add in three senior linebackers in Eli Bear, Eli Pappas, Jays Harlan. They're all going to make plays today. It's just a matter of when. They have some big D tackles as well. Noah Bell has been wreaking some havoc. Everybody on that front seven has been contributing strongly. You get to this point in the season, there are no bad teams left. It's the Sweet 16 coming up next on Clutch Sports Media. Central Illinois, we're going to overtime. After four years of preps coverage in Central Illinois, Eclipse Force Media is ready for a new era. CSM Overtime. What is CSM Overtime? We're going beyond the broadcast to give you in-depth coverage of your teams, your stories, your stats and standings, your highlights and action shots. With your subscription, you'll get to see news and feature stories from all sports, up-to-date stats from around the area, and thoughtful analysis from our team of experts. As for our broadcast and social media coverage, it's only getting better. With your support of Clutch Sports Media Overtime, we'll continue to grow our free broadcast coverage with more sports, more games, and more innovation. And thanks to our partnership with Two Efficient Media, your social media feeds will be filled with Central Illinois' best sights and sounds. CSM Overtime will also give you access to full galleries from some of the most talented photographers and videographers in our region. As the new season approaches, it's time for more. More action. More stories. More coverage of all Central Illinois sports. It's Clutch Sports Media Overtime. It is playoff football at Babcook Field on ClutchSportsIL.com. Glad you're with us. Welcome into Washington. And, John, one of the biggest things that we talked about with both head coaches earlier this week is the weather. You don't get this type of weather in November in the state of Illinois usually. No, you really don't. And funny enough, I saw a... I, uh, I posted on Twitter from Crete Moni Athletics earlier this week, and it showed them practicing in the snow. It was whiteout conditions almost. You look at today, though, 60 degrees outside. We're in short sleeves. Wind not going to be a factor, and a 0% chance of a rain. That's what we like to see. Washington, though, still run, won in the rain last week, though. Washington head coach Gerald Crouch, one of his great traditions in his 19 seasons, he always wears shorts no matter the weather. Today's an easy day for shorts. Looking at how both these teams got here, 
some pretty wide margins of victory, but that final score doesn't really tell the story for Creep Moni. No, it certainly doesn't, and it was really interesting last week. They were down 13-12 to 12 at the half, and they just really ratcheted up the pressure, the intensity in the second half, and scored 35 unanswered to take down Centennial, a team that Washington's also played in Class 6A playoffs as well. 436 rushing yards and seven touchdowns. Washington's got a great running attack, and I don't even know if they've put up those kind of numbers this year. Again, Terrence Sandage had a huge game for them, so you're going to see, I think, more of the same this week. And as for Washington, Danville, another familiar opponent out of the Big 12 Conference, two of the best conferences in Central Illinois in the Middle line I and Big 12 clashing there. The conditions played a big effect, but it didn't matter for the Panthers. No, it really did it, and you know, they were able to handle uh, the wet conditions well. They barely even fumbled at all. They recovered eight Danville fumbles. They forced five of them, won 59 to 14 after the first quarter. It was never really too close. Kayon McQuarrie just really carried them. How they got here, digging into Crete Moniz's season. John, it's hard to believe this is a team that started 0 and 2, but then their defense kind of hit another level. Yeah, they really did, and you know, obviously they gave up some points to uh, Carmel and uh, their other non-conference opponent, who escapes me at the moment. But and their defense, you know, really be, has been shut down. Aside from a couple games this year that they've lost in their wins, their defense has been pitching shutouts almost every week, and keeping the opponents under 10 points. And then there's that stat we mentioned at the top of the show: 42 points or more in each of their wins. That's going to be a number to watch this afternoon. Yeah, it really will, and I can see this game going both ways, Larry. I think we could have a you know low scoring kind of a rock fight, like a 13 to 10 game. I also think that we could see a game that's maybe 50 to 45. As for Washington, how they got here, they've only got one loss. It's to Creep Muniz's rival, Kankakee, way back in week two. But oh man, have they been hot? Eight wins in a row since that loss. Yeah, they really have, and again, it's also with their defense. Very experienced unit they have. They also have experience on offense as well. I mean, they've been pitching shutouts, keeping opponents under 10 points just about every single week. And they're pretty good against playoff teams as well. Five and one against teams that have made the playoffs this year. Absolutely, and again, it's been that defense that has really been the engine for this Washington Panthers squad. Got about five minutes until kickoff. We're going to step aside for a brief break. Come back with some more preview of the action. It's Crete Moni and Washington next. If you're remodeling your home, make sure you choose quality flooring from Ralph's Floor Fashions. We have tile, vinyl, and carpet. Plus, we offer custom installations and repairs. Visit Ralph's Floor Fashions today to see everything we have available. It wasn't that long ago that I was ready to break. Working a job that was making me miserable. Sure, I was getting my paycheck, but I was missing out on everything that mattered. I had to make a change. And that change was joining Sunflower Real Estate Group. Becoming a realtor didn't just give me the flexibility I needed. I'm no longer too tired to have fun at night. And I never miss my kids' games. Sunflower got my life back on track. Sunflower Real Estate Group, the brightest spot in real estate. The gold bow ties are stacked and packed in the heart of Chevy country. At Uptring in Washington, a guaranteed great selection means the time to buy is now. Choose from rows of new Silverado Customs, Trail Bosses, RSTs, and more. Get more for your trade at Uptring Chevy in Washington. We're back in Washington. We're about four minutes away from the third playoff matchup in the last five seasons between Crete Mooney and Washington. Glad you're with us, Larry Larson, Jonathan Michael. Digging into the tail of the tape here, Jonathan, we alluded to it before the break, but for Crete Mooney, when they score a lot, they win a lot. When Washington keeps the score low, of course for the opponent, they usually win. Yeah, certainly, and you know, and any Crete Moniz losses this year, they've been the ones that have been shut out. So it's really been, you know, feast or famine for both these teams. Obviously, if Washington's only loss was pretty low scoring, seven to three game, but you just look at their points allowed. I mean, under 10 points per game is really quite remarkable considering that's your average. And the same really goes for Crete Moni as well. I mean, they've been, you know, doing the same, but we're gonna see two just very similar teams on both sides of the ball, two teams that know each other probably a little bit more than most teams would know each other considering they're on opposite sides of the state. 
100%. It's uh, kind of how it goes in 6A. A lot of perennial powers, Washington, Crete Moni, Kankakee, East St. Louis, the usual bunch. How about the individual players that have gotten both teams to this point? We mentioned these two players at the very top of the show. Terrence Sandage for Crete Moni plays both sides of the ball, bit of an old-fashioned, rugged linebacker, and also an explosive run back. Yeah, it certainly is, and you know they've been you know riding him obviously a lot this year. They're also bringing Kashawn White as well, but you know Sandage is the man to watch for Crete Moni in their backfield. Again, over 200 yards last week, four touchdowns. That's the kind of game that Kenan McQuarrie had to win the conference championship for Washington back in Week Nine. So again, efforts like that will win you games. I think it really could get, could come down to a battle of running backs here today. As for Garrett Cox. John, he's made headlines all season on defense, but last week he burst onto the scene on offense. Yeah, it was a, really a career game for him at tight end. I mean, Tyler Humphrey, credit the quarterback as well for finding him, but Cox had three receptions, 77 yards and a touchdown. Every catch he had went for a first down. Really just shows off his two-way versatility, and again, he's even better as a defensive end. There he is, just getting introduced in Washington's starting lineup on your screen. Keys to victory, John. In the playoffs, both these teams, very strong, very strong programs that you usually won't see make too many costly gaffes. So it's really going to come down to the margins today. Yeah, really. And, you know, obviously, Crete Money, you look at the keys, high score, we mentioned it. You know, 42 points is, I think, probably a good benchmark. They can certainly put up more. They can also put up a lot less. We don't, we'll never know. Obviously, setting the tone, you're on the road. It's been a long road trip. Washington's fans, you hear them, they're all fired up. They want to suck the energy out right away. Absolutely. And for Washington, be special. That uh, sounds broad, but, John, if Washington has an Achilles heel, it's special teams. Yeah, and last week, both of Danville's touchdowns were scored on kick returns. And the same what happened in their week two loss to Kankakee. Their only score that the Kays had was a kick return for a touchdown by Tony Phillips. So that's what Daryl Crouch said. Like, you know, the stuff you just can't let happen in the playoffs. You got to cut down on mistakes, and allowing those big returns are going to be key for the Panthers. There's our officiating crew who put together the coin toss just a few minutes ago. The coin toss was won by Washington. The Panthers elected to defer to the second half. Crete Moni will receive the kickoff with their explosive offense. And of course, as always, our coin toss is presented by Academy of Screen Printing and Awards. Two teams that have a lot of awards under their belt going at it this afternoon. We're glad you're with us on ClutchSportsIL.com and CIProud.com. IHSA second round action winner moves on to the quarterfinals next weekend. That's like you said, Larry, you know, obviously with it being in the second round, these games get, you know, so much more interesting. They get so much more close. Obviously around the state, I think we're gonna see some good games as well. And this is this is where you know the rubber really hits, hits the road in the in the playoffs. Well, one team's going to be the rubber, and the other team is going to be the road when it's all said and done in a few hours. Buckle up. It's going to be a good one. Devin Miller set to boot it away. The sophomore kicker, who hadn't kicked at all before this season, boots it way deep, and this is going to be a touchback. I'll give you some momentum. Obviously, putting them deep, giving Kripman no chance to start the game with some fireworks. It'll be up to their offense, led by a sophomore quarterback, Darren Couch. Stands at 6'1", 175 pounds. Won the job over a few seniors, and he takes over for a guy who's now at Western Michigan, and Josiah Franklin, rather Joshua Franklin, who's now a wide receiver at Western Michigan. They go with the heavy set and a handoff out of the gate. It's Terrence Sandage who won't go down easy. And our first look at Terrence Sandage, my initial takeaway is that guy's a bulldozer. You saw three Panthers players trying to bring him down and just carry with him for an extra couple yards. So runs like that really will get you far in the playoffs. Tough run there from the senior back. Second down and six. Warriors going out of the gun early. They like to run a lot under center. But the first two plays have been out of the gun. 
Flags fly, it's a false start. Penalties, gonna be something to watch today. Two teams that are not often penalized, but again, John, it's the little things that add up in a game like this. Yeah, it is, and you know, obviously, you know, those pre-snap penalties, you know, really, you think about it, oh, it's just five yards, but in the grand scheme of the game, if there's a drive that stalls out, it could be attributed back to penalties. We'll keep an eye on it. So second and six turns into second and 11. It's a screen pass into the hands of Nalen Cannon. He's wrestled down near the original line of scrimmage. Let's hear from our sideline reporter, Michael Savoy. Thanks, Larry. These two teams have very recent playoff history. In 2018, these two teams play in the quarterfinal with Creed Monique taking care of business against Washington. And again in 2021, once again, Creed Monique beating Washington. There's no point, there's no, there's no way Washington doesn't think they can get payback against Creed Monique. Thanks for that, Michael. Certainly some history between these two teams, more than you'd see between two non-conference teams. Third and nine, couch to pass to the sideline and he overthrew Tylen Brefford. Fourth down. Yeah, and head coach John Kanuki from Cree Moniz said that Darren Couch, their sophomore quarterback, has a massive arm. He can really sling it down the field. We'll get more on that later. But I think there was just a bit too strong, a little bit too high. Overall, a pretty safe ball. You're not going to throw a pick with that ball too often. But nevertheless, Washington defense stands strong as we've seen so many times this year. Fans getting animated early. It's going to be Couch to punt it away. Washington brings the bull rush. They don't send anybody back deep to return. It's a good punt from Couch. Ends up near midfield. What do you say? We meet the Washington Panthers offense. Tyler Humphrey, junior, quarterback. Cannon McQuarrie, senior, running back. Jace Harlan, senior, fullback. Dre Lewis, junior, wide receiver. Tyler Brown, senior, receiver. Grayson Barth, senior, receiver. James Johnson, sophomore, wide receiver. Garrett Cox, senior, tight end. Cash Wisher, junior, right tackle. Noah Bell, junior, right guard. Aiden O'Brien, senior, center. Jack Stewart, junior, guard. Uh, Robert Martin IV, senior, D-line. Washington with a trick play out of the gates, but an overthrow. They had Brayson Barth wide open, but it's just second down. And that's a killer there for Washington, and you know, we've seen them start to throw the ball a little bit more these last two weeks. You know, Humphrey back in week nine only threw the ball twice, didn't have a completion. He looked comfortable doing it last week, and now goes for it all with Barth. Again, just a bit overthrown. We'll see if they go back to that at some point, or just say more heavy through the air and have a more balanced attack. We mentioned Tyler Humphrey, Washington's junior quarterback. It was Kanon McQuery, the star senior running back under center there. He lines up in his usual spot in the backfield now. Humphrey under center. Here is McQuery. Plunges into the line, charges forward for a gain of six on second down. And that's a little sidestep action there from Kanon McQuery, who is going to probably go down in Washington history as one of the best running backs who ever be in the program, just so explosive, so tough to bring down. You don't really bring him down for negative yards, hardly at all. He's rushed for well over a thousand yards this season. Had a hundred yards and three scores last week. He totes the rock again, has some blockers out in front, trying to turn the corner. He does! Out of bounds near the 10. Kadon McQuarrie has a, sort of a signature celebration after every big run he does. He just kind of has the ball and just kind of just clenches his fist and pumps them by his side. When you're a defense and you see Kadon McQuarrie doing that, that's not a good sign because it means he's picking up momentum and he's had that Washington crowd. They're getting loud now, Washington in the red zone already. Panthers in the heavy set. McQuarrie gets it again. Why not? And he coughs up the football. It's into the hands of Crete Monee. And oh my, the life has been sucked out of this crowd early. And that ball just popped up straight out of the hands of McQuarrie. You had to figure, didn't get a number on who it was, but it got punched up from behind them. There's, McQuarrie does not fumble often, so that's a momentum shifting play big time. 
for the Warriors. So Washington goes from knocking on the door to now playing some defense. Darren Couch and company back out there. It's a direct snap to Sandage. He doesn't get much. John, watching the film on the Warriors, that's a formation they like to run a lot with various players. The Wildcat, and it's essentially quarterback power, and it works. Yeah, and you know we're going to see a lot of trickery, I think, from Creep Money. We already saw it from Washington here today. Keep an eye on also when they send a guy or two in motion as well. Also, obviously, that Wildcat power just direct snap to Sandage. Could see it for Washington even in the red zone as well later on. It's Tayshawn Harper, the quarterback, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and he's dragged down in the backfield. That's that Washington front seven that has driven this defense all year long. Elijah Bear in there for the tackle. Yeah, Bear had a near interception last week in just about that same exact spot on the field off of a batted pass from Noah Bell, who I believe was in on the tackle as well. But Bear, Harlan, and Pappas are kind of the, the three linebackers of the apocalypse for opposing offenses. They've been strong all season long. Third down and 10. Couch all alone in the backfield. Four receivers set. Tylen Brefford in motion. Couch from his own goal line hits the open man. It's Dorian Patterson for the first down and more. That was a beautiful play from Creep Moni. They put Brefford in motion, and what that does is he's able to gain momentum before the ball is even snapped. He just really just power up field, hit that second stride. All of Washington's attention was more so on Brefford than left Patterson wide open in the middle of the field. First first down for Crete Moni of the ball game. It's a quarterback keeper with Couch. He explodes towards the chains. Couch is a guy who can run it a little bit. He rushed for three scores last week and 64 yards. And yeah, we're gonna see two quarterbacks today that, you know, again, if we haven't mentioned how similar these teams are, that can both run the football, but you know, again, Couch very mobile. I, everybody on Crete Moni is just so athletic. And Couch certainly fits the mold. Ball in the 40, first down and 10, Crete Moni. Crete Moni into the heavy set. They call this the steamroller set. With a fullback in the backfield, they give to Sir Albert Cole. So much for the steamroller. Jace Harlan steamrolls in the backfield. Yeah, there's a guy that you could call a steamroller on Washington. It's, it's certainly Harlan. I like to call him the Bulldog. That's his unofficial nickname, at least for me. But Harlan, the leading tackler. He's always in the backfield, seemingly. And... Big TFL there on second down, so or rather I should say first down, second and 12 now, but put to Kripmany behind schedule. That's important in these games. Couch on the read, nearly tripped up in the backfield, and he is barely able to get back to that line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down and long. You can certainly tell that the, both these teams have scouted each other pretty well. It seems like Washington kind of knows these last couple plays what's been coming to him. Garrett Cox got in there, had the initial hit, and couldn't bring him down. Could have been third and 17, but pretty thankful to be back to the original line. It was Robert Martin who eventually finished it off. Couch will pass again on third down. It's up in the air and picked off. It's the big fella, Noah Bell. Who brings down the jump ball? And Noah Bell has been an absolute havoc machine for Washington these last couple weeks. He's got five tackles for loss. He's got sacks, forced fumbles. He's recovered fumbles. Had a pick six against Dunlap. Has Gets another one there. And I believe that was Pappas who reached his hand up and tipped it up. And then Noah Bell has had to pretty much just box out and say, I got it. Brings it in. No one can really hang on to the football. What an exciting start to this game, Larry. A turnover for each team. That's one thing that John Konecki highlighted. He said, no matter where you're playing football, Alaska, Florida, Tennessee, anywhere in between, you can't turn the ball over. How about a pass from the backfield? Batted down out of the hand of Brayson Barth. Man, Washington digging deep in the playbook in the first quarter. 
and we were talking with both head coaches, and they mentioned that, you know, usually in the IHSA, you know, teams get two games of film on each other. Well, these teams have three games of film. They both exchange their games from Kankakee. So you know, both these teams know each other a little bit more than even their maybe conference opponents, so to say. If you're a Washington fan, you love that mutual matchup with Kankakee, considering that <laughs> Crete yes, Monee lost 42 nothing. Washington nearly beat Kankakee. But it's Tyler Humphrey who gets beat here. It's a big sack. Justin Lawton, the 6'4 senior, crushes Humphrey. And it's going to be third down and very, very long. And Justin Lawton is, you know, a guy that you know has big aspirations. I was looking at his Twitter yesterday, and he, all of his posts, he says hashtag All American. It shows his mindset. Players like that will certainly at least help you a little bit and get into that point. He's taken some D1 visits, including to Illinois pretty recently as well. 6'4", 225. That's a nice wingspan to have on the defensive line. Barth in motion. It's a quarterback keeper for not much. Humphrey gets maybe half a yard, and this is a no-brainer punt situation for the Panthers. Yeah, really, you know, neither team been able to cross midfield yet. Both defenses have been stepping up, so I kind of figured that, you know, this game would go either one of two ways, and so far it's been the way of the defense. Josh Hill is the man back deep, whereas it's Joe Smith who will punt it away. High end over end punt, and it's muffed. The ball is loose. It looks like CM has it, and they do. Terrence Sandage got there to dive on it, and the Warriors exhale, exhale. And as they do, let's meet Washington's defense. Eric Doherty, Jr., um, nose. Noah Bell, Jr., D-line. Uh, Robert Martin IV, Sr., D-line. Garrett Cox, senior, DN. Carter Prina, junior, defensive end. Eli Bear, senior, linebacker. Eli Pappas, senior, linebacker. Chase Harlan, senior, linebacker. Dre Lewis, junior, cornerback. Brayson Barth, senior, corner. Kenny McQuarrie, senior, safety. Zach Ryan, senior, safety. Tyler Brown, senior, safety. Mason Burke, senior, safety. Darren Couch drives nearly into Daryl Crouch, Washington's 19th year head coach. It's his 19th and final season. That's the big story in this game for the Panthers. False start. I'll give us a chance to talk about Daryl Crouch and you know, for obviously all the Washington fans, and people from Central Illinois know, you know what this year has been for him. His last season, he's retiring at the end of it, hoping to postpone his retirement party a couple weeks longer. But you know, for those other people, maybe from Crete Moni or other that are tuning in, I mean, he has been synonymous with success in the area in his 19th season. So it'll be first and 15 after the fall start. Even John Konecki mentioned he's made an indelible impact on not just Central Illinois, but the whole state. Kayshawn White with the carry. He's not going far. Jace Harlan drags him down. Harlan making some big plays early in this game. Yeah, and just the thing I really like about Harlan is how explosive he is. I mean, you just saw how quick he got in the backfield there. He's done it twice so already today. Second down and 15. Had Warriors. five tackles last week and forced a fumble. Interesting fact about him, Larry, is he's one of the only Washington players that saw the field in that 2021 playoff matchup between these two teams. It was Jace Harlan and Henry Warwick on the offensive line. Just two players. That experience will serve him well today. Couch with plenty of time, throws over the middle. It's incomplete. Tipped out of the hand of Tayshawn Harper on the crossing route. And a little bit of a dangerous throw there. He was looking for Harper initially. It looks like he may be down the field, but ball got tipped up. He tried to catch it, went off of his fingertip and almost in the double coverage. 
And that's Dorian Patterson, one of the sophomore wide receiver who's had a big year who's down. He's got one catch today. Big part of that running game as well, as are all these wide receivers. Good to see him up under his own power. Patterson listed as the number one wide receiver on Crete Monia's depth chart again, a sophomore, so him and Couch are probably going to have quite the career at Crete Monia if they stay around long enough. And there's been a lot of good players that have come through Crete Monia. We'll touch on more on that later. Good to see it. Jog back to the sideline, and he should hopefully be able to come back soon. Panther fans, it's third and 15. Make it's third and long again. A situation that Crete Moni has found itself in a fair amount early in this game. Empty backfield. Not anymore. Kayshawn White back there. Play action. Couch can't escape. Garrett Cox gets home. It was Cox and Prina, those two defensive ends. They're like edges of like a fork or a knife almost. They just come in and they just stab the offenses. Got one on one side, one on the other side. Fourth and they just wreak so much the havoc. Warriors. They're doing what they're expected to do and they're performing like they should be performing in these big games. Neither offense able to find a rhythm early in this game. So it'll be Couch to boot it away. Low line drive kick. It'll get the job done, though. Mason Burke wants nothing to do with this. It wasn't pretty, but he can't argue with the results. Low line drive punt from Darren Couch. Pins Washington back near the 20. That was what I always tell people about my golf swing, Larry. I know you've seen it. It's, it's not pretty, but, you know, it works for the most point. <laughs> And, uh, you know, really, even if you don't get a great punt, you can you know, have it have a good roll. So, again, tough field position for Washington. We haven't really seen either team sustain any sort of drive really at all. Maybe only a couple first downs on each side. This is an IHSA second round matchup. Glad you're with us. First quarter clock winding down. This is a Washington offense that averages over 40 points a game. And Crete Moniz offense averages 36, so a bit of a surprise to see a quiet offensive game early. Kanon McQuarrie pushed backwards, and that trend continues. That's McQuarrie's first carry since he coughed up the football in the red zone. And McQuarrie, you know, he's a he's an experienced back. He was their starter all season last year, so you know, he knows you know what is expected of him and. You know, obviously knows that, you know he's going to come back better after that fumble, at least I would think. That's what we've seen from him all season long. Panthers stay in the eye formation. It's a give up the gut to the fullback, Harlan, for the first down. Okay, now McQuarrie is not the only man in that backfield that can carry the football well. Humphrey can. Harlan came in with nearly 300 yards on the night, or on the season, I should say. I think that one got him over 300. He's been carrying the tote in the rock a lot more these last two games. 15 carries for 74 yards. Washington with some tempo here. McQuarrie is spun down. It's a short gain. Brings up second down. John on that fullback position in Washington. It's a great tradition they have here. It seems like every single one of their middle linebackers can also play fullback. Second down and eight for the Panthers. Seen lots of good players on Washington on both sides of the ball. Been able to, you know, play a linebacker and running back past few seasons. Harlan's the latest of them. Here's Harlan again. This time he's tripped up. Third down and medium, and I think this is a spot where Daryl Crouch might consider a passing spot. I certainly would, and you know it doesn't have to be anything crazy. I mean, you only need five yards. You can go for just a quick little, maybe a man, a route that would beat a man. Crete Moni says, or Daryl Crouch said that Crete Moni plays a lot of cover zero, just you know straight on man coverage. So you need something that, with a quick move right after the snap, to just beat your man and get the first down. McQuarrie split out of the backfield. Humphrey keeps it himself and gets nothing. 
It's that strong defensive line. Sir Albert Cole comes up from linebacker to finish off the Panthers' drive. They're going to punt. Yeah, Josh Hill also got in on the stop there as well. Sir Albert Cole, I think we're going to be saying his name a lot here this, this afternoon. It's a fun name to say as well. But, again, you know, Crete Monia's defense, again, we haven't really talked about them quite as much, I think, as we should have. They've been stout as well. It's not easy. That's the end of the first quarter. No points for two high-powered offenses. We'll see if that changes next. It's the Clutch Sports Media Game of the Week. IHSA second round playoff action in 6A, Washington and Crete Moni. Two perennial powerhouses, but the offenses have been shut down a little bit early. Washington will punt for the second time today. Crete Moni has also punted twice. This is a high, good looking punt from Joe Smith. And it's brought down inside the 30 yard line. This is a Crete Moni program led by John Konecki, who's in his 11th season, has over 90 wins in this Warriors program. And John, there are a lot of different stats that you can bring up with John Konecki, but I think the one that stands out to me is 23 players on Division I scholarships since 2010. And, you, and we were talking with them, and it's no reason why, or there's no secret why, Able to do that. Players love him. They respect him. They learn a lot from him as well. Just an overall great guy. Heading the program for the last couple of years. Very much like Daryl Crouch. Two almost legendary head coaches going at it. But the one thing that they have in common, I think the foremost thing they have in common, is no state titles between them. You can probably credit that to teams like East St. Louis and maybe some 6A schools up in the suburbs. 6 is always a dogfight dog fight every year. Sophomore quarterback Couch back to pass. Takes a shot to the sideline. And Tylen Brefford has no shot. Washington is probably a bit lucky that that ball was out of bounds and uncatchable. There's some hand fighting there between Barth and Brefford. So if it was a catchable ball, maybe throwing a PI flag or not. But yeah, third and... Five now. On, it's like for Crete. Terrence Sandage, the powerful running back in the backfield. Couch goes to the hard count. That's something that Crete really loves to do. Hard count on third down almost every single time. The snap is high. Couch chucks it away. He had a man in Brefford, but. He was smart just to get rid of it to bring up fourth down. Well, I, I think they avoided the worst case scenario. They didn't quite get the best case scenario. Really credit to Couch there for being able to just get it out. Good awareness, not take the sack and just say, hey, we'll just punt here on fourth and five rather than fourth and 15. Yeah, and, you know, bad snap there from Vincent Vargas. They're normally very stout center. It's been very good for the Warriors this year, but... You know, plays like that will they'll kill drives, and when you get drives killed in playoff football, you don't always win games. So make it three punts for Crete Mooney. Darren Couch will punt, but not before a flag. Delay a game. So the Warriors will be backed up five more yards. Washington is not sending anybody back to return. They're going to bring the house again. Now that changes as we speak. Brayson Barth, the senior wideout, is back. Couch with another line drive. And it takes a Warriors bounce and a Warriors roll inside the 40-yard line. 
I think for Washington, the, go the goal now is the ball at, at the being spotted at the 38. I think the, the goal now is just to cross midfield. I mean, we've barely seen either team get into either opponent territory so far today. So Washington's offense will start the drive from just inside their own 40-yard line. Tyler Humphrey, the junior quarterback under center. It's the same team in the same game in the second round two years ago. you got to know better than that. So I'm sure Washington, Washington sideline not too happy with that. Now they'll be at midfield. Now they're going to be tracked back 15. So pause the celebration for the Panthers crossing the 50. So second down and incredibly long. There's no real play in the playbook for this. Washington flipping around some personnel. And now the play clock will run. Brayson Barth is the lone receiver at the top of your screen. Humphrey will pass for the first time today. No, he won't. Brought down in the backfield by Anson LeBranch, the freshman who made his first varsity start last week in the first round game against Champaign Centennial. Welcome to the show, big fella. I, uh, look at that. Scroll again, scroll on Twitter. It looked like he was, you know, he was, see, he said, I'm shocked to see myself in the Chicago Tribune. And, you know, obviously, throw the young fella out there, you make plays, you're going to get recognized for it. Makes another big one there. And, Makes it near third and nearly impossible for Washington. Again, not many plays. They're just going to have to chuck it deep and hope someone makes a play. LeBranch blitzes again. That ball is high and nearly picked off. Julian Rawson was there, but the ball hit the turf first. And Washington will be forced to punt. It's turning out to be a Big Ten West game. My word, this is uh, Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Iowa, whatever you want to call it. I mean, this is just punt Mageddon here in Washington, at least here in the first half. It's been flying by. Humphrey looking for the big play to his big play maker in Cox. This punt will fall short of the return man, Josh Hill. Bounces out of bounds on the near sideline. So in case you're just joining us, it's been a lot of that. Punts. A few turnovers from both teams, pretty uncharacteristic. What's at stake today? Well, it's this. This beauty of a bracket in IHSA 6A. A lot of big names on there. And looking at where these two teams are on the right side of your screen, the winner of this game will move on to play Richards and Glenwood. We'll work on getting a score from that game coming up here soon. Two teams that are very much used to playing deep into this bracket. If Washington wins today, it's their third trip to quarters in five seasons. If Crete Moni wins, it's the quarterfinals for a third consecutive season. On first down, a short game. Ball carrier was 13, Terrence, Terrence Sandage. Sandage there. And it's, you know, going back to you know, what was at stake, obviously, if Washington wins, and as does if Oakland Richards wins as well, Washington would be one of the rare teams that would host three straight playoff games. If Glenwood wins, they'd be on the road. We'll get to where Crete Moni would be in a second. White is the man in motion. Screen pass is blown up. It got to Dorian Patterson, who's back into the ball game after turning an ankle late in the first quarter. But there was a lot of traffic in between Couch and Patterson. Yeah, there was, and you know, Washington's just you know been in the backfield. They've been living there, just set up a tent just about all day long. And again, we're gonna see if not really so much so if Washington can force a third down stop. Is is can Crete Moni get a third down conversion? We've seen one from Darren Couch. The man in motion is Brayford. Throw to the sideline to Brayford. He hauls it in. Is it a catch? Yes, sir. 
But the question is, where's the spot? It's going to be close. Looks like you went out of bounds around the 45 or close to it. Looks like they might be bringing on the punt team. And now the official signal, first down. First down catch for Tylen Brefford, the senior who's back this season. After missing all of last season, not due to injury, but because he had to take care of his mother who was dealing with health problems. He gave up his whole junior season. He's back now. His mom's in better health. That's true love right there. A big first down push on that steamroller set. Flags flying left, right, up and down. It's a first down for now, but we'll see if there it comes back. That's one thing you can't throw a flag on is going back to Tylen Brefford is taking a year off to take care of your mom. I mean, how many high school football players do you see that, that do that? And, you know, what a great story. This Crete Monique team is, you know, full of lots of, you know, really good high character kids. Brefford, you know, probably maybe among the foremost of them. But Crete Monique is very excited to have him back. He's been making plays again on both sides of the ball at wide receiver and cornerback. This play is coming back. A true team effort on the push, but to no avail. Quick score update from Glenwood and Richards. Glenwood leads 21 to 14 with 514 left in the second. That was as of 16 minutes ago. Richards, another team that Washington has run into in recent history. They certainly have. They are Always seem to be around you know, around the pack at this point of the year. And Glenwood, obviously, a strong team for the Central State 8. That one should be a barn burner as well. First and 15. Couch takes a shot. It's his first of the day, and it's hauled in. No, it's not. Incomplete. Dorian Patterson had it. He still has it. He can't believe it. And that ball must have just popped out for a brief second or maybe the nose of the ball hit the turf before anything else maybe just came loose for a second. Tyler Brown on Washington was very happy to see that it was called incomplete. Good coverage from him, but you know Dorian Patterson, six foot two, just a little bit taller than Barth, was able to go up and grab that one. That's the first time we've seen Darren Couch show off his arm. He also throws discus. That's what John Konecki said. CM's head coach, and that kind of underlies his strength. Couch throws from the pocket, it's a screen to Brefford. Doesn't get much, close to that original line of scrimmage. And going back to, to Couch, you know, we were talking with John Konecki and my favorite quote, there were a lot of good ones that he mentioned in that talk, but my favorite quote is said, Darren Couch has got such a good arm, could throw the football so far and so fast with so much velocity that he could throw the football through a car wash and it wouldn't get wet. That sounds like an NIL deal waiting to happen. Car wash is popping up everywhere these days. Couch, lots of time, airs it out. It's picked off. Tyler Brown, the senior, dragged down at the 10. He got beat by Patterson the first time, not the second time. The senior with his first interception of the year, and what a time for it. Tyler Brown, also a wide receiver, doesn't get many receptions, but that looked like a reception. Yeah, and you know, that's you know, obviously the benefit to play both wide receiver and corner. You know, your offensive instincts can kick in when you're on defense, and you know, he just had the you know, really good positioning I uh, was able to just, you know, have the Creep Monee guy behind him as well. So he just, you know, right there in position, made the play, and I mean, Washington's deep in their own territory. That's their only downside right now, but we'll see if they can start to maybe build some momentum. This crowd's getting into it now, and a big one on hand. Very few empty seats today at Babcook Field. Cannon McQuarrie, short run on first down. Got to credit Crete Moniz's defense. They've been able to slow down McQuarrie, unlike many teams have. Granted, still early, but McQuarrie is a guy who often gets out to fast starts. He certainly does, and he came into today averaging 8.9 yards per carry. 
again, like you said, just doesn't go backwards too often and hasn't gone backwards too often much today. But he hasn't really gone forwards too much either. Just kind of been stuck in neutral at the moment. We gain a four on first down. McQuarrie has a hole and a first down. Nice job there by the senior back staying upright. Was able to get an extra four yards or so. And again, in close games like these, those certainly can make the difference. McQuarrie this year came in at eight games of over 100 yards rushing, including last week. Had two games with over 200 yards, of them being two weeks ago. So he brings plenty of momentum in to this game here this afternoon. Washington's offense slows it down a little bit into the I formation. McQuarrie once again the back. It's Harlan on the carry. And he barely had his hands on the rock before the defensive line got to him. That play was over almost before it started. Not saying because it was it was poorly ran, but it just because it was, I mean, Kruman knew it was just right there. And, I mean, <laughs> not much of a push, just unstoppable force meets the movable object. And what happens? Well, really nothing. Short gain there on first down. The strong front led by Jawan Henderson, the senior at nose tackle. McQuarrie gets the handoff, trying to find that second gear. Tripped up at the sticks, another first down. Great run there from McQuarrie. If you go back and you know, maybe replay it in your browser, you can see how many people that Cremonee is loading the box with. They have almost nine, 10 guys seemingly in the box. and. They have their outside linebacker, Sir Albert Cole, Terrence Sanders, ready to just come in and kind of stop McQuarrie in his tracks if he tries to run off tackle. That wasn't the case right there. McQuarrie still in at back. A guy that doesn't need much rest. As you can see here, he's starting to get rolling. You'll see this at the run game for a lot of levels. You know, you'll maybe get a you know, gain of five or six, and that one picked up nine. But you know, the shorter runs, you just kind of almost you just keep on pounding, 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 and then boom, they'll be the one where he is gone. Washington well, putting together a nice drive so far. They've gone 35 yards. 35 more would put him in scoring position. McQuarrie with a third straight carry. And this time, it's a shorter gain, but it's enough for a first down. First half clock winding down, approaching the four minute mark of quarter number two, still looking for the first score in a game that features two high powered offenses. Going back to earlier in the game, I believe that the Panthers were the only team to have a play in the red zone. It was that McQuarrie fumble. McQuarrie again. Gain of four on first down. Tacklers on the play, number 15, Ty Morgan, 88, Justin Lawton. That was number two, Kane and It was McQuarrie Ty Morgan with the initial four. hit. It was Justin Lawton who finished it out. Washington's offense. Hasn't had a lot of big plays, but they're in a good rhythm. McQuarrie again. This time he's brought down from behind. That was Terrence Sandage. We've talked a lot about Sandage on offense, but it's on defense where he's arguably better. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes you kind of see that. Like, for example, we saw that last week with Garrett Cox. Everyone knows him as a great defensive end. Well, he looked like a better tight end last week, and... You know, those two-way players are out there for a reason. Both of these teams have been in 6A. They have enough bodies and enough skill on their team. They don't have to go two ways. They have the depth to do it. But if you're starting in both ways, it just shows that you, that you can get it done on both sides of the ball. Sanchez has had a lot of tackles here this afternoon. If the, this game were to be summed up by a down and distance, it'd be third and five, and then a fourth down to follow. Tyler Humphrey is halted. It's going to be fourth down again. And, John, at some point, do you consider going for it on fourth down between the 40s? I think you consider it for sure. But, I mean, obviously with yeah, Joe Smith at punter for Washington, he's had a couple good ones so far today. 
think, you know, you, you just, it's been almost impossible for anybody to have a drive of more than 30, 40 yards. I think you play field position here, try and pin them deep, and if you get a turnover, then you're right in the red zone, and if you force a turnover on down, you're probably getting the ball back in right around the same area that they have it right now. It is important to keep in mind, Washington will receive the opening kickoff of the second half. Joe Smith sends it deep, and it takes a Creep Moni bounce. It's down by Brayson Barth, and back and forth we go. We talked about Creep Moni's great tradition that they have of wins, but they've also got a great history of producing players and, John, there are a lot of names here that I think NFL fans would recognize. Yeah, certainly. You got, you got Chris Slayton. He's playing on the practice squad and earning some playing time. Actually, now with the Green Bay Packers, Lance Lennar played for the Dallas Cowboys. A couple other teams bounced around in the mid-2010s. Laquan Treadwell is probably the biggest name on that list. All SEC player, freshman of the year at Ole Miss, drafted in the first round by the Vikings. And also, you had a CFL standout, Niles Morgan, a big-time tackler for the Edmonton Elks. The leading tackler in the Canadian Football League. Kayshawn White, the senior running Ball back, tackled after a short game. White. John Kanucky said, you know, some programs always say tradition Detroit. never graduates. He said, with us, we say you know, it's about being a steward of the program. You want the team to be good when you're there, but you also want it to be good when you leave. It's setting that standard for the next group. This is a group that's followed a very talented group from last year as Nylon Cannon picks up three yards. What do you know? Third down and medium again. But it's a group that's developed a lot of Division I talent, but also just winning players. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, I, I mean, really just, you know, the tradition, the culture, you know, it all starts with the players, but you know, it gets passed down between players as well. Uh, you know, obviously John Kentucky, a great coach. So, I mean, Green Monique arguably has, you know, the same type of culture that Washington has, has about the same as well. Under 40 seconds left in the first half. We're flying through. Couch lets it fly. Has a man on the sideline, completes to Patterson. What a big catch there from Patterson. It, that one was kind of a, well, you didn't know if it was going to be Complete or incomplete. He gets redemption for that big longer pass that was dropped earlier. So that'll move the chains. Looks like Crete Moni is going to call their first time out of the game. Warriors want to talk it over. And all of our timeouts are brought to you by Fox Pub. I've heard Fox Pub is a great spot to watch football. Not our kind of football, though. <laughs> Indeed it is. It's uh, hey, little... Maybe both kinds of football. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, maybe you have a little bit of best of both worlds. If you happen to be tuning in from Fox Pub. Tip of the cap. Yeah, tip of the cap. Good choice. Nice little place over in Peoria for a nice bite to eat. Some good drinks as well. Thank them for their season-long support. But 29 seconds left, Larry. I Going back to the game, I think that the Creep Moni here – I want to score before the half. It's got to come through a big play in the year, and I would guess it's probably be a pass to Dorian Patterson. Ball's on the 38, first and 10 for the Warriors. Crete Mooney lines up in shotgun formation, four receiver set. You mentioned Patterson. He's at the top of the screen. Couch will pass. Pressure coming. He weaves in and out and can't escape. Elijah Bear bears down. His third sack of the year is going to make things really difficult on the Warriors' offense. They're going to burn another timeout. 15 seconds left in the first half. And Eli Bear, obviously we saw Pappas make some big plays. We've seen Harlan make some big plays. Today. Now Bear gets in on the action as well. And it seems like you know most weeks that you know one of those linebackers really just takes the charge in terms of making plays. And you know right now I think it's kind of you know being evenly shared between all of them. I think early on, Harlan was certainly the difference maker for a Washington. But, I mean, it's Washington's front seven. I mean, you got two of the best DNs in the area in Cox and Prina. You have Noah Bell, who we saw had that pick earlier. And then also you got two other defensive tackles in Robert Martin. Robert Martin and Eric Doherty, who they call Big Rick. And then three linebackers in Bear, Harlan, and Pappas. I mean, it's just playmakers everywhere you look. It's like... 
it's like the Washington Panthers are like playing the Pro Bowl every single week because there's just so many all-stars on that side of the ball. Fifteen seconds, and now one timeout for Crete Monet to work with. Kayshawn White moves into the slot. Couch rolls. Trying to avoid another sack, and he does just barely. That didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. It's intentional grounding. A little bit of a late call, but I believe it was right. There's no one in the area getting back to the line of scrimmage. So really not much that Washington would be able to do if they were able to get the ball back. But if you can get a quick stop here, all the time out, I don't know, maybe you have a chance for a prayer, but I don't know, that, that may be stretching it a bit. Good play there from their defensive line regardless. Just under nine seconds remaining. Fourth down and, rather, this should be third down and very long. Not quite country mile status like our counterpart Cody DeRossens likes to say that threshold for a country mile is 27 yards unofficially, but that's... Is that in the thesaurus or something? That, that That's in the standard that we've adopted, but hey, look at this. Third and 27, it is a country mile. Oh, how about it? Could say also third down and Mackinac, maybe. <laughs> Mackinac just down the road from Washington. Depending on your definition of just down the road. Crete Moni about just down the road from the end zone. Third and 32. Couch, play action. Keeps it himself. And this should be the final play of the first half. Neither team takes a timeout. Or do they? The official pointing at Daryl Crouch. What's think, the signal? I think Crouch nodded to the referee and said he wanted the timeout. Figure a punt if they can get a punt return for a touchdown, it'd be a be a low risk play. Neither That's team it. heading to the locker room yet. A few fans are heading to the concession stand for a head start. There was a timeout taken. Fox Pub timeout. And if you are at Fox Pub, it might be a, a good time to get up, restock on the nachos, maybe a beverage or two. I was going to say, don't go to the bathroom, though, because Washington... <laughs> Had a kick return for a touchdown last week. Mason Burke took the opening kick 85 yards back. Now their main punt returner is usually Brayson Barth. It'd be interesting to see if they'll send anyone deep or if they'll go all out for the block, maybe try and pick it up and maybe for a scoop and score. You never know what could happen, but no play is too big for these Washington Panthers defense to make. And it looks like they're not sending anybody back. So they're probably just going to go for the all out. I think they're probably going to take the snap and try and run out the clock. And now Washington takes a timeout because they had a 12th man on the field. And it looked like Ian Nettles was sprinting off. Oh, interesting <laughs> sequence of events here. It's you know, been an interesting game, but now you look at the scoreboard, figure... You know, nothing much has happened. It's been a lot of defense, certainly. I mean, it's a Saturday. Both these teams doing their best Iowa Hawkeyes impressions. Both of these offensive corners, though, much better than Brian Ferentz, I would say, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion. But you know, these defenses have really just you know stepped up. And I really, I think this game could come down to, we talked about special teams for Washington with not much being produced on an offense both sides. I, I think it could come down to turnovers and Special teams as well. I think that's my prediction of what this game could come down to in the second frame. So the Warriors will line it up again. Can't take those timeouts with you. Might as well spend them. <laughs> See if they throw it deep here. They are in four wide. Couch takes the snap. He is going to look to throw. He does take a shot, and it's incomplete. 
over the head of Tylen Brefford. And that is the first half. Stay tuned for halftime. We've got coverage from Detweiler Park, the state cross country finals earlier today. But first, a break. The Fox has become known for some of the best British and American pub fare around. And for you craft beer lovers, we have 25 ever-changing draft handles. Whether it's lagers, IPAs, stouts, or ciders, The Fox has something for everyone. Join us at The Fox Pub in North Peoria. Sam Lehman of Morton, the number one Ram truck dealer in the Midwest with over 100 Rams in stock and coming. During our Ram Power Day sales event, take 11,000 off brand new Ram Bighorns or finance for 2.9% and shop during our Jeep Adventure Days to save with 8,500 off MSRP on a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Plus, take 4,000 off hard to find brand new V8 Dodge Chargers. It's the last year of production, only at Sam Lehman of Morton. Life is Italian feast, home of the best subs, pizza bread, grilled cheese, and Italian beef around. The best pile of high subs and hot sandwiches in central Illinois. And no one has better homemade, always fresh from the oven bread. Michael's Italian Feast. The deals are everywhere during Uffring's used car super sale. How about great gas mileage? Priced under $20,000. Used truck you can count on. Get the used car you really want at every Uffring Auto Group dealer. Uffring, serving you since 1982. to develop a winning game plan. Get strong. Get strong law. If you're remodeling your home, make sure you choose quality flooring from Ralph's Floor Fashions. We have tile, vinyl, and carpet. Plus, we offer custom installations and repairs. Visit Ralph's Floor Fashions today to see everything we have available. <laughs> So I definitely think that our team has just worked so hard for this moment and um, I know it might not, we might not have ended like we wanted to but um, I just really, the, our team has worked so hard this season and it's got us really far. This season showed a lot of like we had to really be mentally tough with all the injuries on our team and I think that the support really just helped combat all of it and I'm really proud of how we all performed today. Yeah, I think having the support of such a great group of like our parents and our community and our team is so close and I just love every one of these girls and so even though we didn't want to finish fourth today, it was such a great experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feel like we just don't really remember really anything that happens during a race. Yeah. Uh, we just go out there and work our hardest and um, I, that, that why it was a great course. It's fast times and it felt really fast today. Uh, be, compared to last year, it was super muddy and uh, stormy, so this year was definitely a lot better. Um, I think that it's really easy like to push yourself the first mile because like the adrenaline rush and you know it's like only one mile and then you realize you got two more miles yeah. left and I think the end is definitely hard, especially just like pushing for such a long finish and it can be really mentally uh, tough and yeah. physically just draining. Yeah, I think that last mile is just all determination and you have to keep in mind how long you've trained for this, you know. Right. 20 minutes of your life <laughs> yeah but yeah. it's been a really good experience I'm proud of um, these two girls who really pushed it and just they just are so amazing and they did really good um, I'm gonna definitely miss just the team aspect um, these girls are like sisters to me and it's just like it's like family to me and so every day when we go out for a run it's not even practice it's just a time to hang out with my best friends so I think it's definitely gonna be hard to just uh, say goodbye for at least this season to just the family aspect and just being with my Sisters every day. Yeah. Brian Rawls, 1868, be the official bank of the Fighting Illini, member FDIC. I thought I decided to come back because I knew I loved running and it was really great and I had a fun time. And I really love this team and the coaches and everything that goes with it. 
Why I love cross country, um, really, it's just, I love running. My body just feels natural with it. I could just go out for a run and I feel great. And then running with this team, they're amazing people and they really blessed me with all they've, what they've done with me. So the start, it was fast. I knew it was going to be a really fast race today. And so I was stuck in the middle and I could just see them coming in from the left and the right. And my focus was not to just get trapped. About midway, I was with my team and then I was like, Okay, I got to move, I got to move, I got to pick off people. And then at the finish, I was just giving everything I had. It's all I had left to give for the team and what they gave me. Oh, really, it's just that our team is pulled together. We've worked through all this training, and we all had a fun time. And really, this year is just a fast year because we all got this experience with, like, our freshman, Ben Gorsuch. He's a great talent, so all combined together, it makes a really great team. And that was earlier, just earlier today from Detweiler Park, the state cross country meet where it's been held for over 50 years. That was my first time going out there earlier this morning, popped right over to Washington, but these Panthers, both their boys and girls teams advanced to state. You saw interviews there with the girls team. You had Jane Herman, Madeline James and Sophia Ramirez. That team had quite the season. They finished fourth at state today. So congratulations to the Washington Panthers girls and their boys team also finished as well. I will admit I didn't see exactly where they finished. I think they were in the top half. I want to say maybe around 12th or 15th, 16th, somewhere around there. It escapes me at the moment, but great race by Washington boys team as well. Talked with Fisher Rinkenberger. You saw there after the race. It's a really fun event over at Detweiler Park. Thousands and thousands of people there. The action moves, it seems so slow, but also so fast as well. Really fun time. We'll have full coverage of it on CSM Overtime later tonight and tomorrow as well. Jonathan Michael here in the booth, and we also brought up our silent reporter, Michael Savoy, who's been down on the field most of the game, taking some pictures, doing some silent reporting as well. Michael, it's been quite an interesting game so far. <laughs> How would you describe it? You know, Washington being the middle line night conference champion, being one of the powerhouses in Class 6A, they had their workout cut, for them, work cut out for them with Cree Monique, another 6A powerhouse. Uh, it seems like John Konecki's team always plays well against Dar Darren Crouch's team. Uh, you know, the, being in the South Atlantic Conference, they're in the same conference as 6A number one Kankakee, so they definitely have to work cut out for them in their conference. Um, they definitely feel comfortable playing this game. You know, they beat Washington in 2018 and 2021 in the quarterfinals, respectively. And, you know, this game is the deciding factor for the quarterfinals, so both teams are definitely ready. Um, you can definitely see what the defense is today. Certainly, and, you know, you talk about the conference they play, and, you know, both teams have played pretty good schedules, especially in the non-conference. Crete Monique, they faced Mundelein Carmel, who could be a state favorite, and they lost 24 to nothing. And they also uh, played St. Charles North, a very good team up in suburban Chicago, lost 14 to 30. Washington's non-conference, they faced Crete Monique's conference rival, Kankakee, as well as Caneland, who they beat back in week one. So, you know, Michael, I know you're from, not too far from the Kankakee Crete areas over in St. Anne. You know, overall, I mean, you know, I'm sure when you were in high school, you probably heard maybe a bit about Crete Moni and everything. Just, you know, want to ask what you knew about them and, uh, you know, just what they've been able to do in the last couple of years that really is a tradition of success there. A great defensive team. Um, they're a team that never quits on the play. Um, they, they don't ever give up. And that's one thing that if you want to be successful in high school football, especially in the higher classes, you cannot give up. And th this team does not give up. Their coach, John Konecki, he's been at it for quite a while in their program. And he's developed a lot of winning seasons, a lot of winning seasons, and he's developed a lot of conference champions too. So certainly, and that's an interesting point you bring about never giving up. Is at last week at the same time, Crete Monique was down 13 to 12 against Champagne Centennial, who was the 11 seed. Crete Monique, the sixth seed in Class 6A, but you know their head coach John Konecki said, you know, we we're down at the half, and he said, you know, do you guys, how much do you guys want this? You know, how much do you want to keep your season going and just you know, play for more? You know, play for the next round, a state championship maybe down the line as well. And, you know, I think that's probably what both teams are talking about the timeout. I will say, uh, both, I think both these teams are playing well despite the scoreless score right now.
Yeah, definitely. Cream O'Nee, uh, you know, being in the South Atlantic Conference, like you said, they play a lot of gauntlets in their conference, Kankakee, and um, they definitely get themselves prepared for playoff football. Uh, when it comes time for playoffs, like I said, they never give up. Uh, they definitely make teams um, try to, you know, play them well, and yeah. Yeah, certainly a lot about Cream O'Nee, but also, you know, on Washington's side as well. I know you've seen them, you know, a couple of times. You know, this year overall, what have you, you know, what have you thought about the Panthers' first half performance and maybe something you'd like to see more of in the second half? I, I saw a lot of running plays uh, with, um, you know, Chase, or Chase Harlan and Kaden McCreary. I saw a lot of running plays with them, and I saw a lot of defense, a lot of interceptions, a good defensive game. Obviously, the score is mill-mill. The soccer adjective there, but um, say we are playing football, yeah. American football. Yeah, um, the score is mill mill. The score is zero zero. So a lot of defense here in the first half. Two goose eggs on the scoreboard. It's going to come down to the next 24 minutes. Who's going to break through on offense? Who's going to lock down on defense? It's a Class 6A second round here on the WMBD and Clutch Sports Media game on the week on ciproud.com. We'll step aside after these messages and come back. Get some scores from around the area and bring Larry Larson back into the booth and analyze, recap the first half and bring the second half live from Washington. Teamwork makes the dream work, and the Prairie Home Alliance team is ready to work for you. Kick up your curb appeal with roofing, siding, windows, sunrooms, and more from Peoria Siding and Window. Take the risk out of rainy days with gutter helmet and V-Dry basement waterproofing. Update that outdated kitchen for less time, mess, and money with Woodfront Kitchen. And give your bathroom the best in beauty and function with custom bath solutions. Share your home improvement dream today, and our team will make it work. Call us, click on prairiehomealliance.com, or visit the showroom on Route 24 in Washington. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet and Morton, we're excited about the all-new tracks, and they're selling as fast as they arrive. Just listen to Lee. I looked everywhere for my 2024 Chevy Trax. I'm from Indiana, and I drove right over to buy it. Such a smooth and simple process. That's the Bob Grimm way. Family banking from a name you trust. Hometown Community Banks. For over six decades, we've been here right where you needed us. High-quality banking services delivered by caring professionals. People just like you who live and love Central Illinois. It's a history we're proud of, and one we'll continue to offer to every person who walks through our doors. When you bank in your hometown, your money stays in your hometown. Hometown Community Banks. Divisions of Morton Community Bank. Look for the clock tower and you'll know. We have time for you. Game and Grub Sunday at Meadows Avenue Tap. Every Sunday, get $5 match play. Our customers have won over 45 million lifetime. Enjoy East Peoria's best gaming experience. Meadows Avenue Tap, slots powered by Gold Rush Gaming, the gold standard in video gaming. Welcome back to Washington, Illinois. It's the IHSA Playoffs on Clutch Sports Media, along with our team from WMBD, CIProud.com. Good to have them along all season long, including these playoffs. Larry Larson, Jonathan Michael. Uh, John, no score here. And I would be hard pressed, I think, to find another game this year where both these teams uh, were in a scoreless game at the half. Yeah, certainly. And you know, Washington, they've played a game sort of like this. Again, against Southland Conference team in Kankakee. Don't recall exactly what the score was at halftime. It may have been the final score, which was seven to three. Twenty-one nothing. No, I'm talking about. The, uh, oh, oh, you're talking about the, the Washington yeah, matchup Washington, with Yeah, Kanky from week Key. two. That was a uh, low-scoring game as well. So again, that game came down to special teams. Both scores came on special teams. Kanky kick return, a Washington field goal, and you know I think a player that who's I think could be become more important as we get deeper in this game may not thought about it at first. But it's Devin Miller from Washington. He's, he's got a you know 30 mid 30 field goal range. So even if the Panthers can just get inside the 20, getting those three points on the board, I think could be massive. Certainly could. I think once one team gets on the scoreboard, we could see a little bit more offense getting opened up. Uh, as we speak, you're scrolling through the out of town scoreboard. It seems. Uh, what do you got? Well, uh, about what we expected in another game in Class 6A. The East St. Louis machine is still flying. They beat Normal West 54-7. to That was a game that you know, Normal West, I know they didn't want to play East St. Louis. They played them last year in the second round as well. And Flyers are just a different type of program. I mean, it's just a Division I talent factory. So 
looks like they'll be moving on and they'll face the winner of King and Kia's game as well, trying to get some other scores from around the area, not just Class 6A as we pull up here at the moment. Looks like Stark County and Rova, 16-8 game, Rova's on top. Stark County, the two seed in Class 1A. Olympia is leading Greenville 20-13 in Class 4A. P&D and Harrisburg will kick off at 5 p.m. P&D going way down south after a upset win against Kiwani last week. And then at 6 p.m. tonight, keep your eyes on Bradley Bourbonnet, a normal community, a big game in Class 7A. The Iron Man are the top seed, but they have a big test, and I think a gauntlet of Chicago area teams coming up. Certainly, and I, I think earlier in the half you might have mentioned that uh, consequential game to both these two teams in the bracket in Oaklawn Richards and Glenwood. Do you have any update on that? I will look at that at the moment. Again, last time we checked, it was Glenwood 21 and Oaklawn Richards 14. Richards has tied it up. How about this? Nine seconds to go. Update from Ryan Mahan of the Springfield State Journal Run it, Register. Tied up at 21. Miles Mitchell, an eight-yard touchdown run for Oaklawn Richards. So that one is also tied up as well, but with a little bit more offense than we've seen here in Washington. At least so far. Washington won the first half kickoff, rather won the first half coin toss, and they could have won the first half kickoff if they wanted it. They did not. They'll receive the kickoff to open the second half. Do you think any team goes to a really dramatic change offensively? I really, you know, don't. I mean, you know, I think we've seen a lot of running the ball, obviously. We've seen Kripp when he throw it a bit more with, you know, Darren Couch. Again, he's got that rocket arm. We saw some deep balls from him. You know, and, you know, for Washington, we saw him pass a little bit early, some trick plays. Those were some quite interesting plays on that first drive to start the game. But, you know, I, I think if, you know, the more than both, that each team passes, these defenses are so good. And you could easily force an interception. And they always say, you know, you pass the ball, there's four things that could happen, and three of them are bad. So, and again, you don't want to have that back-breaking turnover, that pick six, and it'll just shift all the momentum to your team. I think you just kind of, you know, put all your chips in and say, I, I think our team is tougher than the team on the other sideline. And to see where it goes from there should be a really fun second half. These are two teams that pride themselves on those big boys up front, the offensive line, and also the front seven on defense. And so far, we've seen, as you've mentioned a few times, unstoppable force hitting a movable object, and not much has happened. What do you say we call back to our keys to victory uh, that we established pre-game? And John, a few of them, one of them, for Crete Moni was set the tone. I think they've done that defensively, but now it comes down to the offense. Yeah, certainly, and you know, I they they've, they've definitely have stayed in this game, and you know, I think they've been able to control the football, you know, for a little bit, control the tempo of the game. But you know, um, offensively, you know, really, I think if they can do that, that's a big key. I think reality for both teams. I think you can make that case. And high scoring again. Each of Crete Moni's wins this year. They've scored over 42 points. That is certainly not the case this afternoon. Uh, I think it might be tough to score 42 points in the final two quarters, so we'll see. As for Washington, their special teams has been very strong and slow and steady. We've seen their offense get in a rhythm, but we're beating a dead horse here. Nothing to show for it in points. No, it's certainly not, and you know, I mean, again, Cam McQuarrie was able to kind of, you know, Put together some good runs later in the second quarter as well. It looks like they're going to have a drive going for a bit. Then it just stalled out again. It seems like both teams hit the 50, if they can even reach the 50 at the first point. And it kind of just you know stops from there. You know Both defensive lines have been playing amazing again. So we talked about Washington's, but Creed Moniz of Joe Lewis, Jawan Henderson, Justin Lawton have all been phenomenal in the first half. We've got a score update from... Kankakee, it's the K's 43 and Blue Island Eisenhower 35. So two high scoring offenses going at it there. Up in Kankakee, Crete Moni's conference rival. K's the Southland Conference champions. Crete Moni, second place finisher by virtue of their 42 to nothing loss in week nine. And that update was from a little over an hour ago. So we'll see if we can get 
an updated score from there. Again, you know, Blue Island Eisenhower, they took down Dunlap in a thriller last week, a game that had some controversial calls, I think, on both sides of the ball. It went to overtime. Cardinals were able to prevail. So that's going to be a big time match down in the far south suburbs. If you can call them suburbs of Chicago. Well, it depends on who you ask. Though. King and Key might be stretching a bit. We'll try and shy away from any heated discussions about geography <laughs> as we dive into the second half. Again, Crete Moni will kick it away. Jojo Poku will boot it away. Washington with a number of threats to take kicks deep including Mason Burke. It's short of Burke, into the hands of Brayson Barth, who charges across the 35-yard line. Strong starting field position for the Panthers. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, you're across the 30. That's, you know, still, I think, better than what well, Washington's average field position has been. So I think, you know, you, 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 know, you give Cam McQuarrie a pretty good steady diet of carries on this first drive, and you'll see what can happen. He's obviously refueled from the locker room, and we'll see what their offensive line also do as well. Maybe some new schemes with that as well. Something to watch. McQuarrie will line up in the backfield. On Washington's first play from scrimmage today, they pulled a trick play out. We'll see if there's anything similar here. It's just a toss to McQuarrie, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Yeah, Crete Moni is just such a quick team year in and year out. Two, now you know why. On both sides of the ball, too. Eight, Sir Albert Cole. Cole was the first to get there. Second down and 15 for the Panthers. Warriors defense picking up where it left off. Now, so we talked about the defensive line, but also the linebackers as well. We, you know, we've seen Anson LeBranch make a play. Terrence Sandage has made some plays. Sir Albert Cole in there with at least his second tackle of the game. Humphrey on the option, and he read it wrong. What do you know, Sir Albert Cole again? I think Tyler Humphrey may have no choice but to call him Sir after what the at linebacker has been able to. Do the last couple plays, I mean, just been right there both That's times. The Washington moving backwards again. No high snaps, no penalties, and they've still gone backwards seven yards. Shows you how motivated this Warriors defense is. I think this game's going to come down to just really who wants it more. Something to watch here. Kane and McQuarrie on the sideline. Hunter Reed in the backfield for the first time today. Humphrey will pass. Doesn't have a lot of time. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run, and it's brought in, but incomplete. Tyler Humphrey's pass falls incomplete. That was James Johnson who caught that ball. Jonathan, it looked like that ball was ticketed deeper down the sideline for Tyler Brown, but it was almost intercepted by Humphrey's own man. <laughs> yeah, and Johnson at six foot four, obviously, it's tough to loft balls over his head. So, you know, Johnson may have thought, oh, he's passing it to me, but still would have been short of the six regardless. Keep an eye out for Johnson, though, at six foot four. Here's today's star, Joe Smith, one of the stars, one of the two punters in this game. Get some backspin on that ball. And Crete Moni will start its first drive of the second half across the 50 yard line. One of the only times today they've been in Washington territory. I'll give you a, a, you know, I think it's, you know, you give Cremo Nia, you know, small advantage right now. You get the three and out, shows you that, you know, your defense can, you know, still make stops. Then you get the ball in good field position. They're just a deep ball away from Darren Couch to one of his talented wide receivers from scoring in this game. And who knows, maybe it's ends up being a 7 nothing ball game or just one score could win it. You never know. Darren Couch, the sophomore quarterback, starts in the gun. He's got time, stumbles, stays behind the line of scrimmage, and he's pummeled. Jace Harlan causing trouble again. That is great recognition from Harlan, showing off just his smarts, the experience there. He dropped back in coverage at first, saw Couch got flushed out, and he just darted to Crete Moniz's quarterback, 
said, pretty much just looked him in the eyes almost the entire time and just laser focused, bringing him down for a loss of not much, but still enough to put him behind schedule. It's a give to Kayshawn White on second and 16, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Washington says so much for your field position in our territory. Run by number 17, Kayshawn White. They just said, hey, three. move on back. This is, this is our side of the field. Third and long. Couch will operate alone in the backfield. It's a five receiver set. Rush coming. Harlan trips him up again. The ball comes out. And the officials say he's down. Jace Harlan with his second sack of the defensive stand. Now what's crazy is, is, you know, believe it or not, despite how many plays Harlan makes, he doesn't have a ton of sacks on the year. More so a big tackle for loss guy. He had one coming in today, unless there's any discrepancies in the stats that were provided to us. So he's already eclipsed that total. He's tripled it today. Just as Washington punted, Creep Moni will as well. This time the Panthers will have two deep men. Mason Burke is back there. He scoops it up. He wants to try it. Dances forward before he's ankle picked. Just past the 30 yard line. John, I think it's only a matter of time before those special teams athletes try and start making plays themselves. Yeah, certainly, and you know, I'm sure Mason Burke doesn't have any problem finding a date to homecoming or prom. He showed off his dance moves right there on that kick on that punt return, and obviously did so last week as well. So again, another player that could end up being the difference maker in this game. Burke may not be, you know, the, the star that you think about at first when you think of Washington, but he's played a lot better. He's a very versatile player, can play quarterback. Okay, play running back. He's got starts at safety now as well. Both these teams trying to dance further in the IHSA playoffs. Kanan McQuery back in there. And he climbs towards the chains. Gain of eight. And he probably had to run about 12. Yeah, about six yards sideways and then six yards forward. Nice little play there from Washington. First time we've really seen a, a true option there. And I think Washington, they might go back to that more often. We didn't see much of it in the first half. So maybe Daryl Crouch, you never know he's hiding up his long sleeves of his. You mentioned he wears his shorts, but he always wears a coat with it as well. Second and short. McQuery again has a gap. Could this be the big breaker? McQuery with two men to beat. Breaks one and breaks the other. Down inside the five. A tremendous block from Ian Nettles as well. Maybe would have looked a little bit better if he scored. He just gave a yard short. This crowd is on their feet going wild. That is by far the biggest play of the game so far. All you have to do is just punch it in one yard, which despite Kriminy's good defense, hasn't been a, that big of a problem for Washington. It's gonna be a battle of the big boys here. The Panthers are gonna go to the heavy set. McQuery dashes to the sideline. It's Hunter Reed the back. It's Reed. Gets a bit of a push forward, and he scores. Washington finally strikes in the defensive struggle. That's kind of what we expected. It was that if there was going to be a score, it would be set up by a big play. Not really a sustained scoring drive. That takes up a lot of time. And Kadon McQuery, the usual suspect for that big play, just so explosive. Hard to bring down as well. And Hunter Reed had a touchdown last week and makes it two weeks in a row. Devin Miller on for the extra point. Line drive kick through the uprights. And Washington leads seven to nothing. Offering scoring drive. Look at that, three plays, 69 yards. One minute and 16 seconds. Most of it courtesy to number two in black and orange. 
that was, like you said, the play, the big play that we've all been waiting for. And you know, maybe what that does now is it maybe you know kind of you know excites King or I should say Creep Moni a little bit as well. You know, maybe they play with more urgency now. Maybe we'll see Deer and Couch throw the ball a bit, a bit more. Still plenty of time left in this game, though. No reason to panic. The way it's been going, you may have to worry about your offense a bit more than you normally would be down a touchdown at this juncture of the game. So as Washington breathes a sigh of relief, it's Preet Moni's offense that has to go back to the drawing board. Cowbell. Few fans of the cowbells. I'm sure, the Washington cheerleaders who do push ups after each score are probably happy it's a low scoring game. Short squib kick brought in by Nyland Cannon. Student section, or maybe some folks younger than the student section having some fun. There's a fella down there with a foam traffic cone on his head. The official fall mascot of Central Illinois. Well, speaking of traffic cones, John Konecki said, you know, our group prides itself on showing up to work every day with a hard hat, but it's been hard coming to find any offense. Another sack for Washington. This time it's Carter Prina. Now, Prina, you know, should not be regarded as the forgotten man in that defensive line. Had a fumble recovery that just fell in the end zone for a touchdown last week. And him and Cox have made some, so many good plays and everything this year. When you put all your attention on Cox, it opens up Prina and vice versa. Approaching the six minute mark, halfway point of quarter number three. Here's the steamroller set. Starring Terrence Sandage, tries to turn the corner, and he's shoved backwards even further. That's Elijah Pappas. Team leader in sacks, gets to the backfield. Pappas, a big player and also very strong as well, considering that his dad, Eddie, is the strength and conditioning coach for most of Bradley's athletic teams, especially men's basketball, so it's just a strong athlete for this Washington linebacking court. Bradley just down the road in Peoria. Here's a handoff to the quarterback. Couch has Patterson, but overthrew him. That was the right play at the right time. Missed by inches. And again, Another good ball from Couch, put it in a place where obviously a Washington player will catch it. Only Patterson was going to be the only person that was going to be catching that ball. But again, on third down, a ball that's been delivered a bit too far. We've seen it a couple times so far here today. And I mean, how about Couch, though? I mean, hanging in there, it's still a tough task, though, for a sophomore quarterback in this environment on the road. I think he'll have to probably make a big play, though, maybe later in this one. Looked like Creep Moni was missing an offensive lineman. High snap to Couch and it almost got blocked by Prina. Somehow Couch got that ball off and ripped off a pretty good punt. Washington will start inside Creep Moni's 50, but wow, John, it feels like this game is starting to turn. Washington could really take a firm grasp of this game with a score on this drive. Yeah, it's you know, almost, almost like a little murmur in the crowd now. They can feel the energy. Washington gets the ball back, and they don't give Creep Moni much time to reset defensively on the sidelines. They're right back at, out there after yet another three and out. So we'll see if they keep on feeding McQueary. My, my safe bet is that they probably will. Panthers are going to try and make it back-to-back -back drives after going scoreless in the first half. This is an offense that scores over 40 points a game. It's Kanan McQuarrie with that big bust to get that drive rolling. 
Capped off by Hunter Reed's touchdown. By number 21, Karan Hampton. Gain of four on first down. You know, Washington can do now, and you know, it's too early to, you know, start, I guess, maybe the term would be to use bleeding clock, but you can play a little cat and mouse game. You can, you know, just hold the ball and, you know, make it a little tougher for a creep to get the ball back. And, you know, most teams that win the time of possession battle are probably going to win the football game. Humphrey will go back to pass. Quarterback slings it out to McQuarey. Slips by. Has a convoy. Bounces to the sideline. McQuarey all the way home. The senior star puts Washington up two scores. McQuarrie not much of a pass catching back, but they go with the little screen there. And just got a great block. I mean, really the main thing was he evaded that initial tackle, reached the second level, and he was just home free there in a place that he's been quite a bit that this year, that left end zone here at Bab Cook Field. Warriors jumped. Kalik Woods got a little antsy. Looks like Washington's going to keep the extra point unit out there. I think Washington might decline this just to keep it at a standard distance. Looks like that is the case. Miller's point after is good. Washington 14, Crete Mooney nothing. A quick one for Washington on the uptering scoring drive. Two plays, 43 rushing yards from Kanon McQuarrie. Just as you would expect for Washington. And I mean, again, now the momentum is firmly on the Washington sideline. These, you know, these. Fans, I guarantee they're going to be getting really loud, I think, on this next drive. They have the energy now. They've been waking up. They've seen, hey, we've got some touchdowns rather than just watching the <laughs> scoreless ball game like we had in the first half. But uh, Creep Monia has got to figure something out, and you know maybe they have to dig deep in their playbook as well. Looks like Herb Noblock is digging deep into his closet to find a T-shirt cannon. Washington AD firing some prizes out into the student section. So much talk about Daryl Crouch in his final season. It's also Herb Noblock's final football season. Want to give a shout out to Herb for all the work he's done for us. Onside kick, tipped, it's loose. The Panthers have it. It was right at Nalen Cannon. He couldn't hang on to it. And a pile of black jerseys found the football. I compare this to, you know, you push maybe a tiny rock off of a cliff. It doesn't really do much at first. You push another one off. It doesn't do much. Then you push another one off, and it was a whole just big rock or a piece of land that just falls an avalanche. down. An, an avalanche. <laughs> As our, producer, our director Josh Messenger says, average of momentum. McQuarrie wrestled down after a short gain. Well, Kanan McQuarrie has been a pretty darn good rock, you could say. He, he does, and he's done a good job of toting the rock as well and, and done it for over 160 times this year. Over, came in today with over a 1,300 rushing yards, maybe pushing 1,500 by the conclusion of this one. Here's McQuarrie, spins towards the seam. And that's going to be enough for another first down. Washington going for the jugular with that onside kick. Trying to put this second round matchup out of reach against a Crete Moni team that they've lost to twice in the postseason in the last five years. Panthers looking for their third trip to the quarterfinals in five seasons. Crete Moni looking for their third straight trip to the quarters themselves. 
First and 10, Panthers marching again. Humphrey will keep it, has a gap, and bowls over a man to move the chains again. Yeah, and Washington being able to run the ball so well now again, it's really no secret that they're getting great blocks from their offensive line. You know, we mentioned you know, Woolwick early in the broadcast, the only other player besides Chase Harlan that's played against Crete Moni in the playoffs. Cash Wisher, Aiden O'Brien, Jackson Stewart, Josh Hofer provide some good blocks as well. as the group that Daryl Crouch said, you know, they, he wants them to be more dominant. I think they've been pretty dominant here in this third quarter. Push after push for Washington. Humphrey keeps it again, and he stumbles. This is going to be a short loss or no gain. That offensive line was a big point of discussion, partially because Darrell Crouch is an offensive line guy himself, guy that played in the trenches at Illinois State back in his college days. He said before the season, that's not a group that was where he wanted it to be. You asked him this week, well, how about now? He said, they've been good, still not where we want them. As dangerous. McQuarrie gets just past that offensive line. It's going to make it third and ten. This is well within field goal range for Devin Miller, sophomore kicker. Got a long of 36 yards. Is there soccer goalie, but obviously you need quite the lay to boot a big goal kick down the field after a big save. Panthers had a good year in soccer this past year, but you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Miller hadn't played football this before this year, but a very welcome addition. Humphrey rolls, looking to pass, slips by traffic, throws to the end zone, it's intercepted. Julian Rawson brought it in, there's a flag down. This is going to be waved off due to a face mask. Yep, and I clearly saw Humphrey's face mask get turned back. His head just looked, it looks like his head just turned 90 degrees for a split second and went back. So that is going to be a big face mask call, and... Not many penalties today, but that one is probably the most consequential of them all. Good job by Humphrey to recognize he had a free play there after he got pulled. Took a shot, was looking for Tyler Brown. Face mask is the official signal. It's a five-yard face mask. So that won't move the chains, but gives Washington another third down opportunity. Third and five. That makes the playbook pretty wide open now. You can, you can run or pass here on third and medium. They bring Harlan in and it's one wide receiver. So I, I expect them to keep it on the ground here, but I think it could go to anybody. I mean, McQuarrie is the obvious choice of who you'd hand off to, but I think we also could see a keeper from Humphrey as well as a handoff to Harlan, who we haven't seen carry the ball in a while. It is McQuarrie, cuts forward, still on his feet, battling towards the end zone. Brought down shy of the goal line, but past the chains. It's first and goal. That's an ideal situation for Washington. You can you know, lead the clock down a little bit more as we get about one minute left here in the third quarter. A touchdown here would really put a ton of pressure on this Crete Moni team. Ball spotted on the three. McQuarrie with another opportunity for a score. Pushes backwards. And he's short. This is where Crete Moniz defensive line, you mentioned Jawan Henderson earlier in the game. This is a game that him and Justin Lawton, again, had a big play early, but haven't heard a ton from him since. They're going to really need to keep Washington out of the end zone here. A field goal still makes it a three-possession game, but rather be down 17 than 21 for sure. That is the third quarter. 
It's time to put the fours up at Babcook Field. Washington has broken it open a little bit. It's a two-score ball game. The Jansen Law Center has protected Illinois citizens for over 40 years with regard to dangerous drugs and has taken on the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world and have won cases for Illinois residents. Jay Jansen, one name says it all. We're marching to the opposite end of the field, and this crowd is up for grabs at Babcook Field in Washington, Illinois. It's the IHSA State Playoffs, Class 6A, two perennial powers, Creek Mooney and Washington. These two teams have met now three times in the last five postseasons. Creek Mooney has taken each of the first two, Washington knocking on the door of finally getting a win. As it be so huge for Washington, they don't want their season to end today. It's been such a special year. It's their 100th year of football. Daryl Crouch's final season as well. They won another game, and it could be a home game if they were able to hang on and, and Oakland Richards wins. Kanan McQuarey pushes past one man and into the end zone. McQuarrie's second score of the ball game. And it's a familiar tale for the Panthers this year. The offense goes as Kanan McQuarrie goes. Not a feeling that McQuarrie, after being shut down most of the first half, would break through in the second. Obviously not you know, any big, long plays like the last drive, but getting him in the end zone, that's what really counts. Devin Miller's extra point is high through the uprights. And good. Sounds like we're going to hear from our sideline reporter, Michael Savoy, here in a minute. And here he is. Hey, guys. Ever since that long run up the middle of the third quarter, in the third quarter by McQuarrie, the Panthers punched it in for the first score of the game. And ever since, they scored three unanswered touchdowns. And the Panthers have, have woken up. And the Washington team has since begun to show why they're one of the best in 6A as they score three on air to touchdowns. Well, we'll crew may respond. Back to you guys. Thanks, Michael. There's the uptering scoring drive on your screen. A little bit longer this time, and Jonathan, I think that's going to be important coming down the stretch as extending those drives a little bit for the Panthers. Four minutes and 13 seconds there. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, that, now it's a you know, three-touchdown game. You have 11 minutes left. You haven't been able to get anything going all game. Creamy is going to need a big play sooner or later, figure maybe a long a long pass, a long run, something of some sort. I think you, you really got to, you know, try and see what Terrence Sandage can do. I mean, I know it's been tough selling for him, but he was your big playmaker last week. You know he can step up. It's a squibber for Washington. Bounces around again, and it's Terrence Sandage right on cue who covers it up. Well, this is Terrence not the first Sandage. adversity that Crete Moni has faced this postseason. They trailed Champagne Centennial at the half last week at home, granted by one point. And John Konecki, head coach, said the message at halftime was pretty simple to the guys. Do you want to fight for two more quarters, or do you just want to be done? If Crete Moni wants to fight to see another day, they need to score on this drive. They're going to a different quarterback, Dorian Patterson here. They like to mix it up, but Patterson will pass. Throws towards the sideline, and it's complete. Right near the chains, into the hands of Tylen Brefford. Has a good route there from Brefford, little comeback route. What usually one of the safest throws in high school football? Warriors trying to move it through the air. They almost have no choice. Snap, nearly fumbled. Patterson throws to the sideline again, and once again, it's Brefford. A little extracurricular activity, and there goes the flag. 
match was complete from number four, Dorian Patterson, to number three, Tylen Grubford. We'll wait and see what the call is. There's one flag down in the backfield, one down on the sideline. Any idea here, John? I don't, I'm not really quite sure. Obviously, that late one, you know, is probably going to be an unsportsmanlike of some sort. Usually, if there's extracurriculars and it comes in late, so looks like there may be flags on both teams. There, that one in the backfield may be Crete Moni. I believe I saw him motion at the other ones against Washington. So we got a hold against the Warriors and a personal foul against. Drum roll, please, the Panthers. <laughs> Referee keeping us on our heels. Penalties should offset, if I'm not mistaken. Panthers so first they'll march it backwards, the then they'll march it forwards. For the first time in Washington school history, the girls' swim team has won the sectional. Crowd goes crazy for the girls' swim and dive team that just took home a sectional plaque. Kind of underscores a great community here in Washington. Not just a great football program or basketball program. Across the board, a lot of good athletes. So after all that walking, it's first and five. Patterson remains the quarterback, and he's chased down. Carter Perina, his second sack. It's looking like Cox is going to dominate the first half and Pree is going to dominate the second. Big sack there and, you know, with Patterson at quarterback now, I mean, no doubts that he can get it done for sure. He has to deliver some nice throws, but, you know, he's got to get into a rhythm of some sort and it's you know, those sacks really interrupt it. Patterson had completed back-to-back -back passes to Tylen Brefford. Let's see if he goes back to him here. He throws down the sideline looking for Brefford, and he almost brought it in, but a flag comes in. It's going to be pass interference of some kind. My bet is this goes on Washington. I think... Brace and Barth may have got a bit too aggressive. There is a, it was a late call. I think no one in the crowd was really expecting it. At least no one on the It is pass side. interference on Washington. So that'll be a 15 yard penalty. Always had to remember that you could say on Friday nights it's 15 yards, but now we're playing on Saturdays. And then on Sundays it's obviously a spot foul, so Looks like Washington is in the driver's seat comfortably to have at least one more Saturday. For now, Creep Mooney trying to turn up the heat a little bit on the road. Patterson sends Brefford in motion. Pressure coming, another sack. That's Elijah Bear, his second sack. That matches his total for the season in this game. Now you got Prina with two sacks, Bear with two sacks, Harlan with two sacks. I probably forget another one somewhere in there. Maybe Garrett Cox, I may think may have had one, but it is handing out sacks like it's free lunch. <laughs> Flags fly. False start on Crete Moni. It looked like they had a little something when Dorian Patterson came into the ball game, sparked that offense a little bit, but even though they've been gifted a few penalties, they've shot themselves in the foot. That's kind of like when you try to light a match and you swipe it against the side of the box and it goes for a little bit and then it goes right out. That's why you have to use a gas lighter. Patterson lights it towards the sideline, jump ball incomplete. There's Another a, flag down. This one's going to be roughing the passer. That one was thrown right as Patterson got lit up. Prina laid a big hit on him, and the crowd not liking it. Well, the rules are you got to protect the quarterback. The officials are going to discuss this, it looks like. We'll see. Oh, it's a hold. 
Wow. So hey, clean hit. Crowd loves it. Will Washington take the yardage or the down? They're going to decline it. I, I think that's just, you know, shows you how much trust you got in your defense. I mean, you know, 25 yards regardless of who you're facing is, you know, tough to get if you're an offense. But I guess a Washington defense, good luck getting 25 here. Need something big. I expect them to probably go to the air here. Patterson has a pocket, has a man deep, and it's picked off. No, it's not. Dropped by Tyler Brown. Almost had his second interception of the ball game and the season. Well, good things have come in twos for Washington today. You mentioned all those players that have two sacks earlier. That's almost Brown's second sack. And obviously one of their best things today, where's number two in Kadon McQuery? So maybe that's Washington's Lucky number, going for two wins so far in the playoffs as well. Darren Couch is back into the ball game. Not in the spot he'd like to be. Punting. Taking his time. Low line drive. Skips towards the 30-yard line. Burke watches it. And it's down by the Warriors. So under 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Kanon McQuarrie, the story. Two scores, whole lot of yards. He's been the guy today and all season long. Look at those numbers. And that's coming into today. If I'm not mistaken, those are actually, <laughs> it's actually a graphic left over from last week, still accurate though. He has over 1,100 rushing yards and has 22 total touchdowns, but I think now he's, again, no official stats in front of us. I think he's probably over 1,500 yards and now at 27 touchdowns, that receiving one was his first of the year. They go away from McQuarrie and back to the junior. It's Hunter Reed. The flag comes out after the play. And by the looks of this, Washington is excited. It should be a probably a late hit or a penalty of some sort against Crete Moni. Frustration certainly building for the Warriors, although we don't know for sure if that's the call. It'll be a face mask. Five yard visitors. face mask. So the Panthers will move across midfield. And the biggest factor now is the clock in a three-score game. This is a Warriors offense that is explosive, but on the ground. And at this point, that's a problem. Yeah, they, they're probably wishing that they could maybe bring back Laquan Treadwell and Lance Lenore for a couple extra games. Any eligibility? Probably not. Things get a little crazy these days at the college level more than the high school <laughs> level. I'll, although I read something, I think it was in Texas, where it was a sixth-year high school football player. Oh, man. That sounds like it should be illegal. Speaking of illegal, some whistles. I don't see a flag, but some kind of rules discussion. They're going to reset the play clock. And now get back to it. Hunter Reed's still the man in the backfield. It wouldn't be surprising to me to see Cannon McQuery stay on the sideline for the rest of this game, considering his work level. Here's Reed. Doesn't get much. And Reed's the guy that, you know, obviously. Uh, Got stopped there on that play for Washington, but he looked good last week. You know, came in the second half and had seven rushes for 36 yards and a touchdown. So he's a guy that can get it done as well for Washington. He's a junior, so it's probably the heir apparent to Kanon 
McQuarrie. And a quick side note, out of town score, Oakland Richards just took a 38-35 lead over Glenwood on a 55-yard touchdown run with 4.37 left to go in the fourth quarter. So the winner of that game will await the winner of this game next Saturday. Right now, it would be Washington. On a bit of a stunt, the ball is loose. It looks like Crete Moni might have got there. And they did. Crete Moni on its last breath. About eight minutes to play, and they've got the football back. And I think this is the drive where you really do have to score. I know you mentioned it a couple minutes ago that say you know, they need to score on this drive. I think, you know, they, they're still in this game. Certainly, it will take a lot for sure, but they can strike quick, get a stop. Nothing is too far out of the possibility. They stick with Dorian Patterson at quarterback. The sophomore drops back, throws deep to nobody. A little miscommunication. That sailed over the head of Brayson Barth. Whoops. It looks like there may have been some miscommunication there between him and JV on Williams, who is running sort of almost a wheel route. We run out to the sideline and pretty much cut straight up field. And Williams just, you know, wasn't there, so definite miscommunication there. And again, the clock isn't your friend, so you can't afford to have too many of those mistakes. Patterson with White in the backfield, and it's a false start. Not much going right for John Konecki's offense. Giovanni Arroyo for Crete Moniz motion that said this should be against Washington. Well, I'm sure his uh, appeal wasn't going to go anywhere. The officials are discussing it. They initially signaled false start. Will the call stand? It will. Yeah, so now with the ball back on your own 43, it makes it second and... About 15, so even though the clock's running, you still have to remember to get first downs as well. I think that's important. Even something short would help. Patterson with something short to Cannon. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere to go. Chase Harlan swarms him. What a monster game from the senior linebacker. I think, obviously, Cam McQuarrie right now at the moment, the offensive MVP for Washington, but... Defensively, you know, I think Jace Harlan's making a strong case. This defense is a lot different than the one I watched on Sundays with the Chicago Bears. They have a couple big stars in Jalen Johnson, a couple other guys, but not really much else besides that. Washington has all the big players on their defense. Patterson slips by towards the sideline, airs it out into the sideline. Quarterback pressured by number 80, Garrett Cox, and number 44, Jason You heard the PA, Garrett Cox, getting home. Fourth down and 17. Fourth down and 17. And it looks like Creep Moni will punt. And the fans are going to try and get a little bit of a slow clap going. Very coordinated effort. As a fella down there for Washington, that's been kind of their... Their cheer captain, not on the actual cheerleading team, but he's been leading all the all the chants, the claps, you name it. He's been very active in this second half, and what a great crowd here at Washington this afternoon. Barth is back deep. He points to the football as it bounces towards the sideline. Washington will start at its own 35, with the primary objective being to chew up the timer. 7.07. Stands between the Panthers and their third trip to the quarterfinals in their last five seasons. Jonathan, this has kind of been the expectation for Washington, not just this year, but every year. Yeah, certainly. And you look at Daryl Crouch's resume and just 
you know, where's been able to go each season. It seems like at least every other year they're in the quarterfinals. They obviously lost last year before they reached that point, but unless something crazy happens, it looks like they should and might be back in that same point. Now, I think the focus for them is how deep can they go? Could they get to the state semifinals? Could they get even to the state finals down in normal? I think, you know, it, you really wonder what the ceiling of this Washington team is. And their performance so far today has really proved a lot. They'll get tested the rest of the way out for sure, but it's going to be really interesting to see how good this Washington team can be and how special of a season they can make it. It could be either a rematch with Kankakee in the state semifinal or a meeting with the vaunted East St. Louis Flyers who seem physically unable to lose ever in the postseason. Here's Hunter Reed pushed backwards. Again, McQuarrie staying on the bench. He's got two touchdowns and about a country mile's worth of yards. Indeed he does. And, uh, you know, obviously he was able to be arrested last week, only had eight carries, missed it, you know, just they missed the second half, but not because he was injured, just, you know, just for wanting to keep him healthy. And, you know, you have a guy that's so important to your program, so important to your offense. You want to keep him healthy, and, again, he's gotten a big load of carries. So that should help set up Washington well. Kankakee beats Blue Island Eisenhower 49 to 35 in a shootout. Kays will face East St. Louis. Here's the pitch to Reed towards the sideline and he's pushed out of bounds, but it is a first down. Clock was gonna stop either way. Hunter Reed putting in work in the fourth quarter. And you know, I'm kind of you know getting flashbacks to last year when we were broadcasting Peoria High, some of their playoff games. But Malachi Washington was just the guy around the area, and everyone was wondering, well, who's going to take over for him next year because he's a senior. And we got to see a little bit of you know the backup running back who was Frank Odom. He was a senior at the time as well, so he graduated. We also had Malik Ross. Got to see a little bit of him in the postseason. So. You know, so many of these good playoff teams, I think a common theme is that they don't just have one good running back, they have multiple as well. You know, Hunter Reed is, you know, not going to get maybe the high leverage carries. He had a touchdown earlier today, but he can certainly get it done and, you know, spell McQuarrie when he's needed. Back to Reed. End of the line, and he's pushed backwards. Jonathan, that's a great point you bring up. Because Washington has been so dominant outside of those first two games of the year in their regular season, they've had a great opportunity to get their second string players, their third string players in there. So in the case of an injury, these aren't guys that are just jumping into the fire for the first time. Yeah, exactly. And that's you know another great point about just being such a deep team as well. And they also have, Jake, they have Jacob Walker in the backfield as well, a couple other guys. I know the fan favorite in Washington is Charbel Hamad. The student section goes wild every time he carries the ball, so maybe we'll see him later. That will excite the crowd, but you, know, you look at Washington's stat sheet from last weekend, I think there were at least eight guys that carried the football, and that's been a pretty common occurrence for them, and you look at what they've done this season. Cam McQuarrie hasn't had to play in a ton of second halves, or at least the fourth quarter, you wonder how many, what his stats would be like if he was playing in close games <laughs> the entire season. He might have close to 2,000 rushing yards, and he still could reach that mark potentially this year. Looks like there's going to be plenty of ball game left for Kane and McQuarrie and company next week awaiting the winner of Glenwood. And Oaklawn Richards. Richards as Abraham Lincoln looks on. Sorry, I got distracted. What a what a sight that was. Of course, Washington home to a Lincoln Douglas debate back in the day. So old Abe Lincoln has a statue just across the street from the football stadium. Have you ever been to Washington? There's another guy next to him. I don't know if you saw him on the shot there. I didn't quite see it, but. I don't know who that fellow next to him is. I assume he's an important figure of some sort, but at this point, who knows? Maybe make it Cam McQuarrie. He deserves his own statue in Washington. 
Third and short, Panthers go with quarterback push. Not quite the tush push, but keeper, same nine, result, Kyle first down. Humphrey. Tush push, the brotherly shove, you name it. Is I prefer the brotherly shove. I, I do as well, it just it just sounds a lot more, that's a lot more Keep natural, down. sounds better to say on the air, I think as well. Cash Wisher just after that first down run, he stood and he kind of patted his belly. I think <laughs> that kind of sums it up. The guys up front have gotten quite the push today. They have, and I'm sure, you know, when I got out muscled in basketball, people always yell at me. They say weight room. And I think <laughs> Washington's work at the weight room was apparent, especially in the second half today. Reed keeps the line moving. As Washington can sniff it. Very interesting development in the other game. The winner of Glenwood and Richards hasn't been decided yet, but Glenwood just scored a rushing touchdown with a minute 13 left, and they now lead Oakland Richards 42 38. If they win and Washington wins, Panthers would go on the road next week rather than host Oakland Richards. Something to keep an eye on there. We'll keep you updated as Hunter Reed, once again, gains about one. Third and short coming up, approaching the two minute mark. A few Run fans are 20, gathering Hunter their Reed. belongings, picking up their blankets, their bleacher seats. Third down and three for the Panthers. Ready to head back home and perhaps celebrate a victory. Barring a dramatic turn. As crowd is waiting for it, I'm student section, they're sticking around, they're waiting for the Panthers to rush towards them. It was sure to be a great scene after the game. Reed dragged down past the chains. Stays on his feet. And now it's getting a little chippy. It Looks like Big Rick was a little big mad for Washington. Running back was number 20, Hunter Reed. We were talking earlier in the week, Larry, and so funny, I figured I should mention it. He said, mention this Big Rick nickname. He said, it sounds like someone that should open a barbecue joint. So, I don't know, maybe Eric, maybe Eric Darty and the rest of the uh, Panthers will have a barbecue. They'll maybe celebrate with a nice burger or something, but... Well, it takes a time to cool down the sidelines. No reason to get in any extracurriculars right now at this point of the game. Washington will enter victory formation. Daryl Crouch's bunch prevails in what was once a defensive struggle. We were scoreless through the first half. In the second half, Kanan McQuarrie got rolling. He scored twice. Hunter Reed scored once. And the Washington Panthers are gonna hang a curly W on this one. Third tries the charm for the Panthers over Crete Mooney. And the storybook season continues for Darryl Crouch. I think you can strongly argue that this has been the most memorable chapter Ladies if you go each game in a chapter in this storybook for Washington. This is the one that has been the most magical so far. Sweet revenge over the team that's knocked him out twice in the last five years. A lot of mutual respect in that handshake line. We'll have more coverage when we come back. And Chatham Glenwood. Chatham Glenwood has just taken the lead late in the Oakland Richards game.
We are final from Babcook Field. The Washington Panthers prevail. No score through the half, and then Kane and McQuarrie happened in the second half. Jonathan, I understand there's been a little drama in the playoff bracket. Unbelievable is the only way to put it at this point. Glenwood and Richardson have been back and forth all game long. It looked like Glenwood maybe have found the dagger with a touchdown with a minute 13 left to put up 35 to 31. Guess what? Dejon Newman threw a 38-yard touchdown pass to A.J. Paul Lecky of eight Oakland Richards with 36 seconds to go. Talk about clutch. Oakland Richards leads 45 to 42. That last update from just one minute ago. If that result holds, then Washington would actually host again next week back here at Babcook Field against the number three seed in Class 6A. Man, what drama so as over we're, there in Oak Lawn. As we're working to describe this for you, uh, Rodrigo Perez is hard at work tossing together this. Here's a look at that right side of the IHSA 6A playoff bracket. We're now into the Elite Eight. Kankakee victorious over Blue Island Eisenhower. East St. Louis won over Normal West, as we told you earlier, in a bit of a blowout. Those two teams are going to have a high-flying matchup next Saturday. If that score holds between Richards and Glenwood in what's been an all-time classic, Washington will host Richards next week, presumably on Saturday, here in Washington. Man, unbelievable. Class 6A never disappoints. And there, no matter who wins that Glenwood-Richards game, I was expecting Glenwood to run a kickoff back for a touchdown and just win the game on the final play. You never know, but... This, those are four extremely good football teams. Obviously, Kankakee, East St. Louis could be a very high-flying matchup. Tons of offense in that game. I think both defenses are pretty good as well. That's going to be two very similar, evenly matched teams. You know, Washington, Oakland, Richards, two teams that, you know, quarterfinals for them is not foreign territory. And this Washington team, they know how to win. They're getting hot. They have won, I got to count. Nine, Nine in a row. Yep. Nine in a row now. Good job. <laughs> hey, math isn't my strong suit, and going on four hours of sleep right now. But <laughs> you know, the only math that you know really matters from this one is you know, Kenan McQuery plus his Washington defense equals a W. And that's really you know what it came down to today. That defense really just held strong. Their offense, again, led by McQuery, really took off in the second half, and you can't you know. Kind of can't believe it was close early on because that's not have to seem like it was all Washington. It was. The Panthers found the extra gear in the second half. They get the job done. Creep Mooney finishes the season at seven and four. A tip of the cap to the Warriors who graduated an elite group last year. They fall a little bit short of their goals this year. Washington will play on. They await the winner of Oaklawn Richards and Glenwood. That does it for our coverage this evening in Washington. For our entire hardworking crew, for Josh Messenger, our director, for Rodrigo Perez, our producer, for my partner, Jonathan Michael, and Michael Savoy down on the sidelines, this is Larry Larson saying thank you for joining us, and so long from Washington, the Panthers play on.